What's happening guys, Mike Andrelli here and it's the morning cup of coffee talk with Mike. Um, I wanted to do this for a while and I had to wait till Brad, my client, got transferred, not transferred, but um, hired back at uh, Time Inc, who's the uh, director at Yahoo and I didn't want to poo poo on Yahoo when <coughs> he was there, excuse me, I'm a little under weather. Basically, I, I have Yahoo Mail, so every single day I see the nonsense they put up and they'll put contradictory information up day to day and this is just the way they operate and uh, each screen there's hundreds of millions of Yahoo screens so every time you log into Yahoo or it's customized uh, based on what search criteria you've had so they're trying to market to you the best they can and I don't fault them for that but you should realize that that's what they're trying to do so this might not have popped up on your screen but something pops up seven fitness myths busted and I just wanted to as these things pop up I want to be able to at least give you my opinion on whatever held articles because what happens is people start going and uh, mismatching. They start constructing these insane diets and these insane theories based on what they see on Yahoo. I mean, I'm talking about common everyday people and uh, it just keeps you confused and uh, it's it's like people are just drinking tons of red wine. They're like, this is healthy for me to prevent cancer. And it, it might be based on, I think it was based on observational study uh, that the sub resveratrol in the grape seed, I mean, a grape skin, they did an experiment where they dropped the concentrated amount of that on a cancer cell. A cancer cell died. It means absolutely nothing. You know, maybe it relaxes you. But that or dark, dark chocolate. People are just eating tons of dark chocolate. The same um, acids that are in dark chocolate that are good fatty acids are also in you know lard and other products. So <clears throat> you don't want to just take one little nugget out from Yahoo every day. You'll you'll be insane. So let's talk about seven myths. So and uh, no pain, no gain. I don't even want to read through this nonsense. I'm, I do believe that people go too hard. No pain, no gain. You're you're pushing yourself way too hard. Obviously, um, you're gonna. It's gonna be counterproductive. It depends on what type of athlete you are. If you're an extreme athlete, I, I understand. There's probably you you need to feel that pain. Otherwise, you won't feel like you've gained anything. But for muscle growth or to stimulate your muscles or to tone your muscles or for weight loss, I agree. Great. No pain, no gain. That's why in the classes we primarily or my class we focus on not working out but playing around even though it's highly intense everybody's mindset is that we're playing and not trying to kill ourselves as hard as possible even if we're doing sprints and squat thrusts and jumpers there's a lightness about it and uh, nobody gets injured knock on apple stretching before the exercise and this is highly debatable and uh, you probably aren't even interested in this but the stretching before the exercise I agree it doesn't prevent injuries but what it does do is acutely bring you your attention to your mind, your mind to muscle connection, which most people have a poor sense of. When you stretch in particular ways, and I, when I'm stretching you out, I'll call out the muscle groups in order to identify those muscle groups in your mind. It's called the mind to muscle connection. Most people have a poor mind to muscle connection, especially on the posterior side of their body, their back, their butt, their hamstrings, because they never see those sides of their body. So it's tough to develop it. And um, every time you develop that mind to muscle connection, every exercise, everything you do is gonna be better. It's going to be more explosive. You'll be able to tune in to more muscles every single time you use it. So the best thing to do is do light, not like super. You're not trying to do a full split um, cold. You want to warm your body up. That's why we do high knees. We do jumping jacks and jump rope and then immediately go into some type of movement where you're, um, you know, mountain climber warm ups where it's kind of a dynamic stretch and stretch at the same time. I find this to be the best. Take it from me. I do what, 20 classes a week. For the last 16 years so do the math i've maybe had five injuries in the entire history of me teaching i mean people getting five injuries and hundreds of people in class why is that one your mental state is extremely important the reason why a lot of people get injured i shouldn't put out the two yet the reason why a lot of people are getting injured is because they are not fully focused on the activity at hand and if you start thinking about how you know a huge problem in your life while you're training and you're doing a sprint and you're distracted that's when you get injured. So when you're going 80%, that's when you get injured. You have to have 100% focus. The part of your brain that is at work when you're thinking about solving a problem is going to be a different part of your brain than you should be working when you're working out. It should be more, uh, I don't want to say animalistic, but yes, you should. there should be no thought. You shouldn't say, uh, I forgot to pick up the milk, and that's when you'll twist your ankle. Also, make sure if you have an injury like an ankle or knee, you have to rehab it correctly. Unfortunately, most physical therapists chiropractors will just sell you on nonsense there's a lot of good ones there's a lot of bad ones just like doctors 
a lot of great doctors, a lot of terrible doctors. Uh, you need to make informed decisions on your own, but you have to rehab injuries, especially ankles, because you never get the sensitivity back when you sprain the ankle if you don't rehab it. So you'll sprain it over and over and over again because you need to do balance drills and regain the sensitivity. Also your sneakers and uh, no a Fleet Feet is a Hoboken high-end shoe shop and they are experts on uh, uh, feet and, and what shoe you should wear and also the doctors with the orthotics. I think most of it's nonsense. I think the higher the um, tread or sneaker, the more likely you, you are to not be able to feel the sensitivity in your ankle. So if, you got, if you're walking around like that and your foot is just way up and you're, you're just focused on support, at, at some point, you know, and the, the heel is up higher than the ball of the foot or the ball of the foot is higher than the, the heel, you need to know where your foot is. That's why I use the Vibrams, not because I want to look cool, because I certainly get enough YouTube pay from it. You have to push off the ball of your foot and feel it the way you should stand with a bare foot. And by now, I, I would say about half the people I meet have flat feet, so I'm assuming flat feet is not a genetic problem. Sure, it's bad for long distance running. Ice skates, it's terrible if you want to force your arch up. But if you keep the weight on the balls of your feet, you'll be fine. You don't overwork. Don't overwork either. This leads me on to another tangent. A lot of long distance runners, a lot of triathletes, they are pushing themselves past the pain, the pain in the ankle, pain in the knee. I appreciate their toughness, but those injuries aren't going to go away. You're repeating a motion over and over for miles and miles. You're going to get a severe injury. This is not, this isn't necessary for you to be optimally healthy or to look the way you want to. So keep that in mind. Just because of the fact that no pain, no gain. You don't want to injure yourself and uh, always have that nagging injury because you repeated emotion. Some people are set up for long distance running. Their bodies are, are slender. They don't have a lot of muscle mass. Some people are set up for explosive movements. So you should kind of, of course, you should push yourself, but don't don't injure yourself. Okay, it's it's silly, it's silliness. So exercise speeds up your metabolism for hours. Uh, I've heard this before. Obviously, you know, especially weight training, they say it burns more calories. Uh, your metabolism, all of that, it's really, what are you eating? It's, it's a huge question. What are you eating? What is your goal? So if your goal is to lose body fat, you should be eating a particular diet. If your goal is for performance, a particular diet. If your goal is to put on muscle mass, it's a particular diet for that. And then from there, you have to self-experiment to see what works, what does not work. Eating and just exercising to speed up your metabolism, it doesn't really work. Um, maybe for weight training, because what you're going to do is you do a heavy weight training uh, exercise and uh, uh, workout you're going to eat and most of the calories are going to be partitioned to go to muscle fibers and regrowth of the muscles and not into your fat cells. Yeah, if you, we have to talk about this one-on-one -on -one because I really need to know your goals. I don't want to give out general information. If it's for body fat loss, email me mike at cktrainer.com. We'll talk about that one-on-one. -on -one. See what else they got for me. Crunches lead to a six-pack. Yes, I dispel this rumor all the time. Listen, ab exercises and nobody's, you'll listen to this and then you'll go buy an ab master after this. All the ab exercises, most of the ab models out there, don't do anything particular for their six pack. It's low body fat, okay? Most of them are genetic freaks. They don't even know how they got a six pack. You need to, uh, ab exercises are more important to work the transverse or abdominal muscles, the ones on the inside that can pull the stomach in. I believe the vacuums, if you look at my vacuum exercises, uh, belly button to be pulled in and up, it's probably more important than doing straight crunches. You wanna work full body moves. That's why we do Jersey Shore crunches. We do uh, copyright 1997, by the way. You want to do full body movements that train your entire body to move. And um, that's going to get the body in a position where it can burn more calories and reduce body fat and, and also diet. If you want to see your six pack, you got to diet. There's no, no two ends about it. Your diet is probably the most important aspect of it. I'm going to wrap this up because I got clients coming in. I got to run down to the gym. Running on a treadmill is easier on my knees. I mean, really, if your knees are bothering you on running, it's that repeated motion. You're repeating a motion over and over and over. I don't believe kickboxing seems like it would be more dangerous to your knees. I would say that the repetitive motion is probably more dangerous over long periods of time. Uh, you know, move around and die. Don't do not do the treadmill if you can avoid it. It's so boring. Using exercise machines is safer. Uh, well, it does limit your motion, so you could possibly consider it safer. The best thing to do is back to the stretching is learn your body, develop a mind to muscle connection. That's going to be by far the most important uh, tool that you can have. You want to develop in your brain, you want to be able to control as many muscle fibers in your body as possible and then you'll automatically know how to do lifts. You'll automatically know how to do movements. I can throw you into a kickboxing class, a jazzercise class, a 
you know, gymnastics class and you're, you'll know how to trigger the muscle fibers in the right sequence to give you the ability to do any move. So that's probably the biggest skill. So you're not just doing exercise to get through the exercise, you're doing exercises to build and develop skills within your body. Hopefully this has been uh, enjoyable. It's been everything. It's been a rant and uh, I'll do this more often. Morning cup of joe with Mike. Later guys, enjoy your day. You only get one shot. Let's make this happen guys, if I'm talking to the class. Attack, attack, attack. I want you guys to push up as hard as you can, whether at home or in your class. Now it's time to step it up to 2012. Have you really pushed yourself? It's cold outside guys, but we got big time game plans, right? Feet over here, you're gonna get leaner and leaner every single day. It could be raining, it could be snowing out there. It doesn't matter, you're gonna get leaner and leaner. Let's get it fired up, fired up, you get it fired up at home. Everybody else get it fired up, here we go, Tana. Nine, see you guys later. Go, 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 go